today, as promised, I'm going to do a tutorial on how I make my uh, art tissue dyed paper. So this is something called bleeding art tissue. Uh, it comes in lots of different brands, but the one that I've only ever used is Spectra. And you can buy it in art stores, education stores. Uh, I believe I ordered this when my kids were little, when we were still doing elementary homeschooling. And I think I got it from um, rainbowresource.com. But I believe uh, also you can get this on Amazon. You can get it in small packs as small as 25 sheets. This one is 100 sheets. And I'll, I've had this for over 10 years and I'm still maybe half done. Like not even half done with it. Um, on Amazon, you can actually buy pieces of this bleeding tissue already cut into, you know, small squares or circles. So uh, if you just want to use that shape, that is probably a really good idea because it's not fun to sit and cut tons of tissue paper. So there's 25 colors in here and I'm not really sure what to do with the white. <laughs> so if you have an idea of what to do with the white, let me know. Um, and they also have black and brown, but of course the darker the color, the harder it is for you to have the ability to write on the pages afterward unless you use a metallic or a white pen. So do keep that in mind. One thing that I have noticed is that this paper is useful more than once. So these pages right here have been used once, maybe twice. And so you can continue to use these pieces. Just know that the the ink that comes out of them will be lighter every time, but it is just an economical way to, if you just save and reuse. And also, once they've been used, it kind of all blends together, and so they look sort of tie-dye, and they'll create that effect on your project. So I've already cut some pieces here. I have strips that, I normally don't do strips, but I thought we would try those today. You'll notice that there is a shiny side and a non-shiny side. This is the side where all of the dye is. You could still get the same effect or close to the same effect if you don't have it the rough side down, but just know that this is where most of the dye is on that uh, rough side down. That's the way you wanna put it on your paper. I've cut strips and squares and sort of hexagons. And then these are just extra pieces after cutting out these other things that are odd sizes and shapes, but I like to use those. And then I tried to cut some circles as well. I'll show you several different techniques you can use with this, depending on your project and depending on your preference and how messy you want to get, honestly. Okay. So for this first one, it's better to put it in a pan and do the same technique on both sheets. So this is a jelly roll pan. I think it's 10 by 13. And so I'm just gonna start putting these strips down. Y'all, don't I have a great camera lady today? This is my daughter who's filming for me. Okay, so I'm gonna try to keep the colors together, but I'm not gonna be super upset if I don't. Depending on your preference, you can let them be next to each other or you can overlap them. I think for the stripes, I'm not gonna overlap them just because they're so narrow. This is looking 70s already. Love it. Okay, so now I'm gonna do red and then some pink. You know what? I don't have enough strips cut to uh, continue to the other page, so I'm gonna remove that page. That's the wrong side. All right, now we'll do some blue. This looks like a t-shirt design from the early 80s. <laughs> You can hear my cat, Mittens. He's now been in two videos this week. If you saw my Happy Meal video, you'll notice that he was in that one as well. He wants his 60 seconds of fame, I think. Okay, so if you're doing this type of design, 
The easiest way to do it is to use a spray bottle. Standard fine mist spray bottle. And so it's kind of hard at first because the spray bottle does also let air come out and you don't want your pieces to go flying. I just see a double here. Wait a minute. There we go. So you don't want your pieces to go flying. So I'm gonna kind of hold it until it starts to stick to the page. You don't want to completely saturate it, but you do want to make sure that every piece of the tissue is wet and then the paper underneath will, it will obviously be wet, but not, you're not going to just dump water in here. So it creates that crinkly, noisy paper that we junk journalers like, if that's what your style is. If not, I'll show you another alternative. So what we do is we let this dry. Um, if you can put it in a sunny spot in your home, it may only take a couple of hours. I don't recommend putting it outside. I did that last week and I looked outside an hour later and there were tiny pieces of tissue paper all over my yard and it was not a very windy day. So if you don't have a sunny spot or a place where you can put it next to a heating vent or something like that, then just put it on, the, on a table. You can stack them like this and leave them overnight. At the end of this video, I'll do the reveal. So that's one page. Let's go ahead and do another. We hear you, Mittens. Okay, here's another technique you could use. You can get a flat paintbrush and you're just going to wet the paper a little bit at a time. Not much because it will dry out pretty quickly. And I'm just gonna start laying these down. I'm going to overlap these a little bit. I think I have these rough side up. They're pretty hard to grab. Look, I don't have enough water. If you find that you don't have enough water, you can go back with a brush and add more. This one, the darker colors you'll see, they bleed very easily. And so um, if you wanna to try to keep your colors separate, the spray bottle might be a better option for you. I can't tell which side is rough on some of these. Can y'all hear my cat? So when you overlap them, it kind of reminds me of that toy that we played with in, in our centers in school in the 80s called, well, I think now they're called magnetiles because they have magnets in them. But when I was a kid, they were just translucent or transparent colored plastic tiles that had little divots in them and you can construct things with them. And when you overlap the colors, then they... Um, they created a, you know, we put a yellow in front of a blue and it made, made a green. It was just so cool. I remember loving those. Okay, so now we've got some more random. I'm probably going to fast forward this video. Stop talking a minute and fast forward so you won't have to watch all of this process because it, it can be a little boring. Okay, did I miss some right here? Resist painting. 
So I'm going to draw, probably shouldn't draw in the burpee pan. I'm going to draw some flower shapes. I'm just drawing some mod 60s looking daisies here. I have no idea if they're even or not, but you could write something, like write a message. You could just draw a bunch of lines or zigzags or curly cues. We're going to put bigger pieces on this to make it go faster. Um, and I think I'm going to spray it. I think I've got these upside down again. I can't tell. It's really hard to tell, y'all. I mean, I don't know why, but I think the longer I go, the more dry my hands get. And I have trouble <laughs> figuring out which side is up. So I'm not really bothering with the color. Um, I'm just putting random colors on here. If you've noticed in my journals in the past, sometimes I try to theme the colors according to the type of journal I'm doing. Like I'll do a, a journal that's um, retro sewing and I have a lot of pinks and oranges in it. So I will only use shades of pink and orange. So that, that is totally fine to do as well. This time, for the tutorial's sake though, I am just putting a random assortment of colors. And like I said, if you reuse the same ones more than once, the colors do get less vivid. So if you're looking for more of a pastel, muted look, that's probably the best way to achieve that because there are not many pastel actual sheets in this pack. And then for this last one, I'm going to show you that you don't have to cover the entire page. Let me pick my colors first. I want to do a turquoise. red. These are not very good circles. Um, if you have a, um, a die cutter, you can most certainly cut these out with a die cutter and you would have perfectly formed shapes of any kind. You can actually do, you know, flowers or animal shapes or whatever you kind of want to do. I'm just doing the bare minimum. I don't have a die cutter. I have a scan and cut, but I do not have a die cutter. And scan and cut would probably not do very well with this tissue paper. All right, so what I'm doing here, I've got two stuck together, is I'm just gonna create a little design slash pattern in the middle of the page that overlaps. It reminds me a lot of the art, of a lot of the art that you see in children's books, the paper piecing art, and I love that. Let's do one more here. So I'm gonna just let this breathe and let it settle. I'm not wetting the whole page as you can see, but it's already creating a really cool bleed over effect. And then when I lift it off, you'll have a white page with a design in the center. I think this is gonna be super cool. I think that's all I have for you today. I did not do the hexagons, but of course, any shape will work, strips will work, and 
any random cut of any of the colors will work. I'm gonna slide this back a little because I don't want it to get the other colors on it. So thanks for watching. And if you'll stick around at the end, I will do a reveal where I lift off the pieces and I show you how to store them and reuse them. And we'll find out what these things look like. Okay, you guys, this is finally dry and I can show the big reveal. So I'm going to keep all of these little pieces of tissue so I can use them again in other projects. They're a bit faded, but like I said, you can reuse them at least once, sometimes twice, depending on the darkness of the paper itself. So what you do is you just carefully or not so carefully take all of the pieces off. And I like to fold these nicely or stack them nicely and put them in a Ziploc bag. And I just store the pieces in the same bag with all of the new tissue paper so it's all together. This turned out beautifully. It looks very summery. I may have to put this one in my tropical journals. The paper itself is still a little bit damp, but these are completely dry. So once that happens, you can go ahead and take these off and store these away. And then just uh, let this, it can just sit on the table at this point. It's not gonna hurt anything. Um, if you have white countertops though, I would not put it, put it on those until it's 100% dry. So let's look at this one. I think this is the one we did the flowers on. No, this might not be the one. This is just the random one that we made. I don't have my camera operator anymore. She went to see a movie with a friend. So I am doing this with one hand, so bear with me. These are, uh, 100% dry as well, but they do tend to stick sometimes. So if that happens, just be careful with them. See how this one has so many colors on one piece? So that'll be a really cool one to reuse too. You get a totally different look with these when you use them a second time because um, they're really wrinkly and they have folds in them. So you can kind of see here where there's a fold, it doesn't make full contact with the paper and it sort of gives it a tie-dye look. If you are very insistent on making sure that your designs are solid like this with no white, then what you could do is use a rolling pin or a brayer once you put the pieces down to make sure they're fully adhered to the paper. I like the white space personally, but if you want it to be the whole page to look like this, you can use a brayer or a rolling pin. Let's move over here to this one. Let's see if the resist crayon process worked. I see part of the flower. So we have a white line going through it, but again, that does not bother me one bit. But you can see that that white crayon did provide the resist that we needed for a design. Super cool. This one didn't adhere as well, probably because I had it um, not fully down on the baking sheet. Sometimes if it does like this, you know, where it kind of goes up a little bit, it won't rest really well on it. And then last but not, well, let me show you the finished piece. Sometimes I forget to do a full shot at the end and then these little circles. So these, I love the way this looks. I love it. I love it. I'll have to do more of these for sure. So you could cut the, this art uh, bleeding art tissue in any shape you want to. You can make letters, you can spell out things, um, you can overlap, you can not overlap, you can do the thing where you leave a lot of air gaps, 
where you can try to fill in every single little space. Um, another thing that I've seen people do that I am not going to do because I want these to be pages for journaling on is once you're done with this process, and you can do this also on like a piece of cardstock for journaling cards. It doesn't just have to be journaling pages. You can do the same process on journaling cards and have a beautiful design on the front and blank on the back. But at this point, you could use a stencil and stencil a design over it, or you could get a black pen and draw some sort of an image or trace an image but you have this beautiful rainbow multicolored backdrop now for leaving as is or as a uh, starting point for another really cool piece of art you could even decoupage you could fussy cut book images and put them on here the the possibilities are endless this paper is so fun if you have never tried it before or never heard of it before i encourage you to uh, try it it is so fun and it's so versatile thanks for watching today i hope this sparked some creativity and helped you get some some ideas on how to make colorful journaling pages and journal elements using this new found at least new to me when i found it uh, art medium I hope all of you have a lovely day, and I'll see you in the next video.